right, folks, and welcome back to another episode of our venture in the visual novel, Adventure of a Lifetime. Man, oh man, what a time. Stuck in a typhoon. The love triangle, battle royale confirmed. Come to find out there really is a sunken treasure ship. Well, I don't know if it's a treasure ship, but it was the sunken ship they were looking for that looks like the typhoon brought in overnight. So now what will happen from this point forward? That's what we're going to find out. How is this going to progress? So let's get started on this episode of our venture in the visual novel, Adventure of a Lifetime. Summer in Ogasawara was about to reach its climax. Emily Shirase was about to embark on her greatest adventure yet. Looks like she's just about ready. Well, not much you can do about that. Ah, so this Think you'll be okay that deep? If you get scared, just let the instructor know. Emily laughed proudly and shook her hair. Getting a little ahead of ourselves, are we? Looking at her, you would think that she really was the daughter of some oceanic deity. Emily put on her underwater mask. Good luck, Emily. Emily gave us a thumbs up before she leapt into the ocean. She was undergoing training to get her diver certification. That way, she would be able to recover the treasure from the ghost ship. She was still afraid of the sea, but she wanted to recover her parents' lost engagement ring. That need was stronger than her fear. The day after the typhoon, we eventually made it back to Chijijima, but Emily didn't take the ferry back home. I... この島でやりたいことがあるの。それが済むまで帰らないから。わがままだって分かってる。でもお願い許してパパ。本当。うん。ありがとう、パパ。大好きよ。Emily breathed a sigh of relief and smiled brightly as she hung up the phone. She had used the cafe's telephone to call him. She wanted to apologize for running away and to let her father know that she was okay. I didn't like that laugh from the last from the last bit of what she said. Let's watch this one. Let's be sure to watch that one. I'm glad he let you stay, Emily. Oh boy. So they say. What about your grandson, homie? What about your grandson? Like that? What is your beef with your grandson anyway? What is your beef? But I've been here. 
Just ask me, Grandma. Thank you. Thank you. I'd say if there's anyone who's being a waste of space at this point, it's probably you and your attitude. Old Biddy. Whatever. Emily looked anxious as she asked, but Grandma just laughed. I don't really see the resemblance. What? There's no way you looked like Emily. That's just rude. Probably not in your appearance, but showing your attitude. Grandma waved her cane angrily. And that's how Emily started working at our shop for the rest of her stay at Chichijima. Indeed. They were going to let Emily pay for the training later. That was the scuba shop's owner, Chisa's father. Grandma was well known on the island, and thanks to her influence, they would let Emily pay for her training later. And so today marked the second day of her diver certification training. It was time for her to take the final test. She had to leave the instructor, swim out to a designated spot, and return on her own. If she could do that, she would pass. You can do it, Emily! Nobody. Chisa and I watched from the boat the shop had prepared for the training. Finn the Dolphin was alongside us, watching as well. Emily couldn't actually swim, but with scuba gear, that wasn't a big problem. With the mask and fins, and a cylinder on your back, diving was nothing like regular swimming. Emily went out and touched the designated large rock. Then she turned and came back. She returned to the instruction with no problem, and the instructor formed a large circle with his hands. Yatta! All right! Emily was a great waitress. She'd only been working for a few days, but she had already become the cafe's poster girl. What, was she supposed to be like some Moe character, trip over herself and drop the pallet or, you know, drop the uh, the platform and then everything just spill on the floor and then you'd have to consecutively or continuously bow to the customers apologetically? Uh, sorry, Chisa, but I don't think that's this in this particular visual novel. <laughs> Chisa's happy to be working. You know how jealous she was of your job collecting mail from the seafloor mailbox? When Emily first arrived, and as Chisa pointed out, she was completely reliant on people. But we were still just kids after all, so being dependent was only normal. However, over the last few days, Emily really seemed to grow up. And of course, couldn't forget the other post girl. Chisa had started working right alongside Emily. She was popular in her own right, particularly with the tourists. <laughs> Emily 
as Shiza was already an island celebrity. After they heard she was working here, quite a few came by just to see her. Yare, yare. You need some help in the kitchen? I'm getting tired of you. I went over to help anyway. There was no way she could keep up with this crowd. Seafood yakisoba, ready! いらっしゃい、りょうちゃん。りょうちさん。お前マジでバイトしてんのな。エミリーちゃんは？エミリー、ご指名よ。はい。聞いたぜ。取ったんだってな。見たいのね。いいわ。見せてあげる。始まった。
probably thinking we were serving breakfast, came in and sat down without a word. I'm sorry, but we're not open yet. Oh, this is I can do something simple like bacon, eggs, and toast with some coffee if you'd like. I still had some ingredients left over from breakfast, so I got to work. A scent of fried bacon floated through the shop. What are you up to, Chinami? Chinami had appeared out of nowhere. After staring silently at the customer, she sat at the counter and whispered over to me. It's just a customer. Don't be rude. Cut it out. He can hear you. How do you like your eggs? Over easy or fried? You got it. I carried the simple breakfast to his table. Here you are, sir. Arigato. Please don't mind the girl. She's a bit strange, but she doesn't mean anything by it. Are you here on vacation? His answer seemed a bit vague. My mouth shut up to Chinami. It is. Not much point in rushing anything. There wasn't much to feel rushed about, honestly. The shops were only stocked on cargo day, and though the tiny island had no trains, it was easy to meet up with people. On an island like this, living between the sea and the mountains, Laid back was the only way to be. He sighed after a sip of the coffee. Thank you. Ogasawara. We use beans grown here from the Ogasawara Islands. And for the fact sheet, local coffee made with beans cultivated on the Ogasawara Islands. A very rare coffee with only about 200 kilograms harvested a year due to damage from typhoons. Not many people know it, but there are coffee beans grown in Japan. Only in tiny parts of Okinawa and Ogasawara though. Machiko's Cafe uses Ogasawara beans. <laughs> The man took another sip and severed the scent and flavor of the beans. Next, he set the still hot bacon and eggs on his toast and started his breakfast proper. With a couple of wistful signs, he finished off his meal, clearly enjoying it. Did you want to eat anything? Okay, so just a uh, cafe a late. Right? I have no idea how to pronounce that. <laughs> I worked on Chisa's coffee. Gochisousama! Odai wa... That'll be 500 yen. Yasui ne! Isn't that normal for breakfast? Tashikani. Uchi no mise mo sou da. The man put a 500 yen coin on the table. Gochisousama! Oishikatta yo! Come back anytime! Dari? No idea. Probably a tourist. I don't think that's how it works, Shinami. Don't encourage her. Just then, Emily came running in. And with that, we're going to find out what happens in the next episode of our venture in the visual novel, Adventure of a Lifetime. So I hope everyone is enjoying this adventure thus far as I pretty much am. And I want to thank everyone for watching this episode this time around. If you like what you saw, maybe consider leaving a like. And if you want to see more, maybe consider subscribing if you haven't already. So until next time, happy mixing, everyone.
Bye.